September. Anyone pres present who wishes to speak in support or against an application, as well as anyone with questions or concerns, will have an opportunity to speak. The committee will make their decision following each application. If there's anyone present who is not a who is not an applicant or an agent, but is interested in the decision of the committee, you may file your interest with our secretary treasurer. Please list the file number, your full name and mailing address. Copies of the decisions are automatically sent to the applicant and the agent within 15 days of the meeting. Only the applicant, the minister, a specified person or any public body may appeal decisions in respect to applications for consent or minor variances to the Ontario Land Tribunal. The decisions are final if there are no appeals 20 days after the committee's decision. May I remind you that we are being recorded and to mute your devices if you are joining us online until it's time to talk. And um, when you're um, ready to speak, make your way to the podium, state your name and first and last name for the record. Um, First order of business is to determine if any members have any disclosures of interest when conducting, considering any of the applications that we will be dealing with. Are there any disclosures of interest? And I see Linda who's joined us remotely. Anything? No. Anybody? Good. Okay. Um, may I please remind? Oh, let's, we did that already. <laughs> Have all the members received the minutes from the previous meeting? Are there any errors or omissions? If not, I have a resolution before me to adopt the last minutes of last month's meeting. Can I get a mover and a seconder, Tim? All those in favor? Linda, yep, thank yep. you. That's carried. Okay. First application to be considered is a severance and the planner will give the report, please. Testing, can you hear me? Thanks, new microphones. Um, so through the chair, I am presenting on behalf of one of my colleagues and the application is as such has been received to sever a parcel having a frontage of approximately 30 meters, a width of 90 meters, a depth of 100 meters, and an area of 4,572 square meters, or roughly 1.13 acres, and retain a parcel having an area of 78.41 acres. As a boundary adjustment, lands to be added to existing residential lot located immediately adjacent to the west of 1946 East Quarter Lane Road resulting in a final lot size of 9,226.83 square meters. The subject lands are located on the northeast side of East Quarter Line Road between McDonnell, sorry, McDowell Road West and 12th Concession Road east of Langton. The land is both zoned and designated agricultural, and there is a swimming pool serving 1986 East Quarter Line Road on the land, having been built outside of the legal lot lines on a separate lot without the benefit of a building permit. This application was originally presented to the Committee of Adjustment on July 19th, 2023, and was recommended ref referral. The reason for that referral was to seek a legal opinion on whether there was a potential for adverse possession claim and if that would constitute a legal reason for the boundary adjustment. The legal opinion was that there could be a case for adverse possession, but that was based on the information submitted, which was very limited in its evidential base. It is the opinion of staff that given no evidence was submitted to the county for review to establish that adverse possession is likely and that ultimately this is a judicial decision that needs to be made, sorry, that needs to be established through a court process. There remains no legal justification for the boundary adjustment. Um, as such, the proposed adjustment would conflict with the PPS and official plan and is recommended for refusal. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there an applicant or agent in attendance? Okay, we'll get to you in a second. Um, any questions of the committee or the planner? No, okay. Um, the agent? So at the last uh, meeting, 
uh, basically had said that he wanted to Craig Young. Uh, so at the last meeting, uh, basically we had uh, said there was adverse possession on the property to the timelines uh, being uh, more than two years before the Land Titles Act was enacted. And uh, you had said that you wanted to get a legal opinion to see if there was a legal reasoning to do so. Uh, so my understanding is that your lawyer had said that, yes, there is legal reasoning to, uh, behind the behind a claim. Uh, but my understanding was that they said without a court verdict, uh, you have no 100% certainty. So basically, we know that there's um, legal right to the to the property, and um, there's no. I can, the only person actually I can take to court is a county because there's no conflict between the two parties. So what, there can be no legal action taken against someone that's given consent to re, um, alleviate the matter. So the only conflict that holds it up is is the uh, issue holding up going against the Land Titles Act. So I'd already spoke to the lawyers about it and they said you can't take the, the matter to court because there's no reason to do so. They won't hear it because it's already been, uh, there's consent already to, to resolve, or resolve the matter. No, but there's no conflict. Thank you. Through the chair, uh, my only comment is that I can't comment on a legal interpretation. That's why we sought the legal advice, and it seems like there's a disagreement between two legal representations. So, no comment on that item. Does do we have um, an opinion from our legal um, department of the on behalf of the county? Thank you. Through the chair, I'll reread what's written. So. The legal opinion was that there could be a case for adverse possession, but that was based on the information submitted, which was very limited in its evidential base. It is the opinion of the staff, given no evidence was submitted to the county for review to establish that adverse possession is likely, and that ultimately this is a judicial decision that needs to be established through a court process. Okay. So we we're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, right? Um Anything from the committee? Go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to recommend that we defer it again. And I think the lawyers, the two lawyers need to get together or whatever and figure it out. Because I, I understand what this fellow is saying about not being able to uh, get a judgment. So. Yeah, um, you, you have to sue for adverse possession. But the problem is if you're not suing the other party that's up to the law but you're saying that um you'd have to sue the county is that what you're saying or the there has to be someone in conflict of stopping the agreement from going through and we have an agreement between both parties that don't that are agreeing that have submitted the the uh, proposal but you don't have that agreement right well we have it based on waiting for the final approval from the county yeah from the from this committee yeah so we need basically we need the approval to move the lot line and so we can finalize. Or the boundary adjustment or whatever terminology is. Well, I think what you're asking this committee is kind of above what um, this committee was designed for. Um, Mohammed, any opinion? Mr. Chair, uh, if the property owners does not have any conflict for that particular use, then the only reason the boundary adjustment might be required by the county because of is um, of the existence of the pool without permit. So that might be the only reason county would ask for a resolution. Uh, but if they don't have any conflict between the property owners, the county does not have anything to do with that. Uh, I don't know how to address those, this thing. I mean, probably it needs to be through the legal first. Uh, the legal procedure and if it is if it does uh, mm -hmm. resolve the issue then probably uh, the owner can come back and ask for a boundary adjustment at that point we can say it would be a legal reason for the boundary adjustment right <clears throat> and i would i would tend to agree with that you don't like the report says you don't really have a 
a legal reason per se for the boundary adjustment. Other than ownership under the adverse possession of the Land Titles Act. Which is what the lawyer has confirmed or said there's likely a case there. Which yeah. is you said you needed a legal reasoning behind it to do it. And that was my understanding as to why we, we got the opinion or we, we, you were getting an opinion from your counsel. Which he's stating, yes, there is reasoning there. Bill, anything? Well, I read the opinion and to me, it almost seems like we have the wrong party bringing this. Right. We need the pool owner to be claiming the land that they have taken adversely and you need to contest that. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the pool owner claiming the land and we were asked to reverse it actually to submit it this way. So we originally did it that way and we were asked to reverse it. So then it was submitted this way because it was we were told that it had to be the person giving up that had to submit it because there was an arrangement put in place. So we had to redo the application. As I read through the opinion and and. You know, the, the elements are it has to be uh, known, but not action taken, but you have to exclude the actual property owner from the site. So the case law I looked at, it was you know, it was a, an estate one, but they had put a fence around it and put no trespassing signs on it in order to exclude the actual property owner who never took any action. And then when he passed away as a state threat, back to me, say, well, it's, right. it's not working. Um, so, so, if, so my understanding was what they were trying to convey there is under the Land Titles Act, it's ownership or maintenance of the property. So it could be cutting grass, it could be the planting of the trees, can be anything of maintaining that property that claims that, which is what they were trying to refer to in the issue. And I think that's where probably the, your your counsel was saying, yes, there's a claim, but he's not the, a, a judge, so he couldn't rule on it. It's his opinion that there's a claim, which would we were expecting would be the legal reasoning where you'd be able to approve the adjustment to be put in. Well, the way the way I see it, I think this needs to go to the court somehow. Somehow you need to get it from the court, get a ruling, and then come back to to this body for a decision either way. That's the way I see it anyway. Um, I don't think I could support an approval, that's for sure. Um, but I'm just the chair and I will let the members decide. And Linda, do you have anything to add at all or? No. no. Okay, just making sure. Thank so you. Uh, what are the wishes of the committee? Well, actually, well, just before we go on, is there anyone else in attendance that wishes to speak to this application, either online or presently? And hearing none, um, does do you have anything else to add? Thank you. Covered it all, right? Yeah. Well, the issue was if there was legal reasoning behind it, and like I said, uh, that was what we thought was what the reasoning was where you're getting your legal opinion. I mean, the other option is if you, I had asked to see if we could reach out to your counsel so they could understand what if that would clarify possibly better i don't know so you'd be uh you'd be okay with a referral sure for now yeah other than that it's going to be court costs which the, the court caught like i said the only person i can go to court was anybody there's a conflict over so i can't take the neighbors because we've got an agreement in place right okay so it, there's you know other than that it's us okay, so the motion there's a motion on the floor for a referral can I get a seconder? So the referral would it be for to to speak to your solicitor again, or have my we can, we can direct our staff to to do that, I guess, and and try and get this sorted out one once and for all. Yeah, just so it's an easier resolution because it's uh, uh, yeah. You have to appreciate this committee. I mean, we we're, this is a very unique situation. I mean, you know, yep. we're not in the business of making legal opinions and decisions per se yep. um, Understand. we we go by the the reports that were given and, and written and the and the policies of the province that are yep. put in place so this is a very unique situation for us to be trying to get our heads around so i think um the motion is a a referral and that's moved by tim and a seconder bill so um 
that's that's basically what we're looking at. OK, so um, that being said. File number BNPL 2023140 is is going to be referred again. Or and I guess we can add uh, some direction to staff to get ahead, get a, uh, in touch with their legal. Get the lawyers chatting back and forth. Uh, through Mr. Chair, I mean, without further information, I'm not sure what uh, comment can our legal uh, representative can, can give as uh, he already provided his comments. So we need some more information to get some more review and okay. comments. Okay. Okay. So Mr. Chair, definitely we can go back and ask what documents we need because I mean we are planners. We don't have uh, this is like enough. this is the second time it's coming yeah. before us and we'd like. Yeah, or if we can at least get the kind I had asked for the contact information for your lawyer, so my okay. lawyer could reach out to them. That would probably be the best. OK, to see if there's some rest there. that can come. So again, file number BMPL 2023140 is being referred. Uh, all those in favor, uh, Tim and Phil. And Linda? Yes. Thank you. And that uh, is carried for a referral. Thank you. OK, thank you. OK, next up. Is file number. ENPL 2022046 in the name of Alyssa and Justin Martin and the planner can get the report, please. Thank you. Through the chair, an application has been received to construct a detached accessory structure requiring relief of 109.9 square meters from the maximum permitted usable floor area of 200 square meters to permit a total usable floor area of 309 square meters in the agricultural zone. These subject lands are approximately 2.29 acres located southwest of the intersection of Indian Lion Road and Cemetery Road and are currently occupied by a single detached dwelling, shipping container, and detached accessory structure, the latter of which is subject of the application. This application was considered previously at the April 20th, 2022 Committee of Adjustment meeting. A site visit by planning staff on March 18th, 2022 determined that the application and requested relief from usable floor area uh, at that time, which was 22.9 square meters, did not account for the shipping container on site and a recommendation for a deferral by staff was passed by the Committee of Adjustment. The application has since been amended to reflect the required amount of relief from the zoning bylaw. The subject lands are designated and zoned agricultural with an overlay of significant woodlands over a portion of the site. Planning staff are of the opinion that the proposed use and scale of the structure is consistent with other buildings typical um, for residential lots in the agricultural designation and rural lands in general, there's no anticipated negative impact and as such um, staff's opinion is the application meets the four test of a minor variance and recommend it for approval. Thank you. OK, thank you. Is there an agent or applicant present? Or online? No, OK, anything from the, any questions from the committee to the planner? Is there anyone present or online that wishes to speak either opposed or in favor of this application? Do so now. Hearing none, what are the wishes of the committee? I'll Thank move you. to approve. Thank you. It's seconded by Linda. File number AMPL 2022046 in the name of Alyssa and Justin Martin. That's and move to approve in accordance with section 45.1 of the Planning Act. The requested relief is considered appropriate for the proposed development, minor in nature, maintains a general intent of the official plan and the zoning bylaw. All in favor, Tim and Linda? Yes. Bill and myself, and that's carried. Okay, next up we have file number ANPL 2023169. In the name of Jesse Vicano, and the planner can give the report, please. Thank you. Through the chair, I am presenting on behalf of one of my colleagues, 
So the application seeks relief of 99.72 square meters, the maximum usable floor area of 100 square meters to allow for the construction of a approximately 199 square meter accessory building to the rear of the dwelling and relief of 1.1 meters from the maximum height of 6 meters to allow a total height of 7.1 meters. The subject lands are located on the eastern side of Angling Road, approximately um, 250 meters south of Norfolk County Road 19 East, and the area of those lands are approximately 1.5 hectares um, with frontage on Angling Road. They are occupied by a partially completed new build dwelling. The lot is zoned both hamlet residential, the western half, and agricultural on the eastern section, but the house being constructed is wholly within the hamlet residential zone. This application was referred by members at the August 16th, 2023 Committee of Adjustment in order to allow for the correction of the public notification to include relief from the height of the building to bring it in line with the zoning bylaws for an outbuilding accessory to a dwelling in the hamlet residential zone, and this process has been undertaken. The levels of relief sought are considered by staff to be minor and appropriate and comply with the intent of both the official plan and zoning bylaws and as such are recommended for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, is there an agent or applicant present or online? Online. Uh, it's Bob Phillips from JH Cahoon Engineering Limited. I'm just here to answer any questions. I think the planner outlined the application fully. Okay, thank you. We'll you just get your name again, Bob. Oh, you got it? Okay, never mind. Okay. Never mind. Any, okay. Thank you. any questions from the uh, committee to the planner? Is there anyone present that wishes to speak for or against this application? Online? What are the wishes of the committee? I'll Tim move to move, approve. Tim moves to approve. Linda seconds. Um, file number AMPL 2023169 in the name of Jesse Vicano. In accordance with section 45.1 of the Planning Act, the request to relief is considered appropriate for the proposed development, minor in nature, and maintains a general intent of the official plan and the zoning bylaw. All those in favor, Tim and Phil and Linda? Yes. And myself, and that's carried. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next up we have file number ANPL 2023183 in the name of Kenneth and Susan Newhoff. And the planner can give the report, please. Thank you. Through the chair, I am presenting on behalf of my colleague. An application has been received seeking relief of zoning bylaws to allow the construction of a garage extension to an existing boathouse and a full story addition to the boathouse and garage. Relief of the following 0.2% in lot coverage to permit a total lot coverage of 10.2%, 2.65 meters in height to permit a total height of 7.65 meters, and relief of 118.63 square meters from the permitted 56 square meters to allow the construction of a boathouse with a usable floor area of 174.63 square meters. The subject lands are located south of Duncan Street on the west side of Ordnance Avenue. The area of the subject lands is approximately 855 square meters um, with frontage on Ordnance Avenue and it backs onto a waterway. The subject lands are occupied by a two-story cottage with a detached boathouse to the rear. The existing boathouse currently has a lot coverage of 6.2 percent. This file was pre originally presented to the Committee of Adjustment on August 16th, 2023, where it was referred. The recommendation of referral was to allow for staff to amend the public notification to a correct description of the proposed works in terms of zoning requirements. Um, nothing has changed in terms of the proposal apart from the public notification. <clears throat> the level of relief sought in terms of usable floor area is over three times the permitted usable floor area in the zoning bylaw. It is not considered by staff to be minor or appropriate, and the relief in height is also 50% higher than what is permitted under the bylaws. As such, it is professional opinion of staff that the levels of relief sought would not comply with the, with the intents of either the official plan or zoning bylaws and the application is recommended for refusal. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there an agent or applicant present? Okay, get to you in a second. Any questions from the committee to the planner? I read the applicant's response and 
So can you can you let us sort of fill us in if he's correct in that um, if they built the garage as a separate building, it would be fine. But the issue is actually that it's attached to the boathouse. Thank you. So through the chair, I've read the script prepared by the planner. We can take a moment of recess for me to read the response and review accordingly. Um, Maybe I we'll, just we'll get to the might the, uh, take some time to provide yeah, a ahead, hey, then we'll, on uh, zoning review. If you if the uh, agent has anything to add, yeah, step right up. Button on the right. Um, I just like to call up the the owner mm -hmm. Sue Newhoff just to um, maybe give a, a background into um, the intention that uh, she what she was trying to accomplish here. Sure thing. Before I speak, mm -hmm. I'm just going to give out some uh, some paperwork. Also, I'm not sure why Norfolk County did not include our blueprints to to show why um, the the building the proposed building is not going to be an eyesore. Hi, good evening. Hi. I'm Susan Newhoff. Um, thank you for the opportunity to speak. Um, I'll just, I guess, very briefly go over my submission. I'm not sure if you had the opportunity to read it and digest it, but basically the purpose of the proposed boathouse expansion um, is we're in desperate need of storage. Um, the current cottage does have a crawl space, but it's prone to flooding. We've had a, a couple issues these last few Novembers with the surges from Lake Erie, so it's not suitable for storage. The existing boathouse is about 19 by 30 feet, and the usable floor space, frankly, is water. It houses a 23-foot boat and a canoe, so there's no storage uh, opportunity uh, in the existing boathouse. So the idea was, could we expand the boathouse, um, you know, build upon it um, something that was, you know, pleasing to the eye and keeping with the neighborhood, uh, something that would complement the cottage um, and rather and importantly to limit the lot area that's floodable. Because why build another outbuilding that's just going to flood? Uh, so the idea was we could get storage above the current boathouse, um, be off the the floodable uh, lawn, and an 18 foot extension uh, at ground level uh, for like a little garage. So you know, lawn mowers, bicycles perhaps uh, a car in the winter, things like that. And the idea with the storage over the boathouse, um, Christmas decorations, um, boxes, lawn furniture, fertilizer, tools, so on and so forth, you can imagine. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, so we thought long and hard about boathouse expansion versus a separate outbuilding. And to have another outbuilding on the property would take up more, quite a bit more um, lot coverage. It would require us to chop down a couple beautiful mature trees. Um, and just we thought it would be more of an eyesore. We thought the more kind of practical and elegant solution would be to expand and build upon the existing boathouse. Um, I think those are my main points. I, okay. I respect the, 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 the planner's comments. Okay. Um, I, I just wanted to make the point that there are numerous one plus two story uh, similar structures on the canal system. Um, ours is actually it would not impact the public streetscape, if you will. It wouldn't be seen from the front. It would be seen from the canal, but that's private land back there. and. When you, per my submission, you can see the vast number of multi-story boathouses down there and the ones that are highly, highly visible from the public um, streetscape would be the ones along Ordnance as you look down the canal, a couple with integrated, you know, boathouse garage structures. So I, I, I with due respect, I'm, I, 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 I'm thinking some of okay. the I, come, pardon? Okay. Okay. I, th I think we've got the okay. You got it. Okay. Picture of okay. And everything. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Sue. Um, so the Newhoffs reached out to 
prominent homes, uh, myself, Sam Bunting, to mm -hmm. uh, design this two-story um, storage space for them. And, and they their intention was that this, this building would look similar to the existing two-story cottage. So we feel that we've designed a very tasteful two-story cottage that not only reflects their cottage, but also reflects other boathouses that are on the canal. Like we've said, there, there's almost upwards of 12 boathouse, two-story boathouses, and we feel that ours isn't going to negatively impact. Um, anyways, I, I'm going to try to move on quickly and just touch on some points. Because Prominent Homes does build a lot of uh, cottages in Turkey Point, we know that the average lot coverage in Turkey Point is between 30 and 40 percent, and very few actually exceed 40 percent lot coverage. This, uh, with this application, um, our lot coverage is going to increase to 25.6% lot coverage. So really, um, the Newhoffs could essentially build a separate building and still be within the 30 to 40% lot coverage that the majority of properties in Turkey Point average. But again, their intention wasn't to cover more land, it was actually to just build up so there's less impact. Uh, the height of the building, I mean, we in order to build up, we have to build a taller. You know, again, we built, we feel we built a designed a building that reflects, you know, quite well with the, the neighborhood. It reflects other boathouses, and again, the 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 height of the existing cottage is nine meters. This building will not overshadow that that existing cottage from the street view. So we feel that that will not negatively impact the street view. Um, when it comes to the overall um permitted floor area or usable floor area uh, yes you know we we are exceeding a boathouse floor area by three times but again we're trying to lessen the impact on lot coverage you know i just was in here a couple months ago for a different um two-story garage it's not a boathouse it's a garage and that was over 100 square meters of usable floor area this isn't uncommon for turkey point we feel it it definitely will suit the neighborhood. And and again, there's no one here to um, say they, they disagree with or, or speak against this application. We, we feel that we, we've done our due diligence here. So thank you very much okay. for your time. Thank you. I'll just go back to Hannah. She can uh, comment on the comments of, of, her, of her colleague. Thank you, uh, and thanks for your patience. I'm trying to catch up as quickly as I can on other people's reports and uh, the letters. So thank you for speaking to that and coming in today. Um, so I just have some points for clarity. I want to take notes while I was listening. Um, for clarity, the usable floor area accounting for the uh, boat slip uh, that is true. It's just consistent with every other boathouse. So it's not to say that this is unique. It's just a consideration that's applied to every single boathouse in the resort residential zone. Um, I noticed some discussions on lot coverage and how combining a boathouse and a garage maybe impacts lot coverage and the discussion of a 30 to 20, 40 percent or 25 percent. So just for clarity on the zoning bylaw piece. Through the RR zone and provisions for accessory uses through section 3.2.1, there is 10% permitted for accessory structures, and that is wholly separate from 15% permitted for the main use. So if you have a boathouse and a garage, whether they're separate or together, that counts for 10%. It's cumulative impact. And how big a cottage is is completely separate from that. From planning, sometimes we consider them cumulatively together because if you have a boathouse that's, and I'm just going to throw out a number, 20% of your lot coverage, you can still, as of right, do a 15% cottage or larger if you apply for another minor variance. So we consider that, but again, they're they're completely separate. So I just want to clarify that. Um, we talked about other boathouses. So because there are other boathouses doesn't necessarily mean that the planning department has recommended approval. I think some committee members have worked with me long enough to see 
in my history, I haven't recommended approval for very large boathouses. So professionally, I would agree with my colleague's opinion. Um, and the reason for that is because it comes from the official plan policies um, and our secondary plan. So we have a Lakeshore Special Policy Area Secondary Plan. And within that secondary plan, we have community design guidelines um, for resort residential areas, and they point to the importance of lot coverage. There's a benefit to maintaining a certain size of lot coverage for things like amenity space, um, drainage and infiltration. We get a lot of wet areas in our resort areas, so reducing that. Um, our septic systems need space to exist. And it also speaks to what we have found over time, this increasing scope and scale of development in resort residential areas. So in re reviewing policy, um, my opinion as a planner is that we should try to find uh, reasonable growth within these spaces. And for structures of this scale, that may not necessarily meet the intent of those policies. So that's probably why the recommendation was, refu was for refusal. Um, but I will leave it at that and leave it to the community members. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Anything else from the committee? I just have some comments, Alan. Yep, go ahead, Linda. Okay. Um, so just with regards to the um, planning report, I kind of disagree. I, I feel like um, two-story boathouses are typical on every channel in Turkey Point. A large number of property owners are reconstructing boathouses to accommodate the larger boats that most of the property owners have today. And the um, five meter height isn't always um, adequate. So a lot of the boathouses um, and the committee, I feel like we've historically been approving up to seven meters. Um, in this case, I agree that the boathouse is not visible from the street. It's only visible from the channel. Um, if the structures were separate, they would be permitted to have a separate garage can be up to 100 square meters in usable floor area and seven meters in height if it's separate. Because it's attached to the boathouse, it can only be 56 square meters and five meters in height. So I feel like the applicants are uh, trying to do reasonable growth and they're trying to minimize the lot coverage and retain mature trees but at the same time, they're being penalized because they want to attach the two structures. And I feel like the applicants did an excellent job um, in, in providing their um, submission to the committee and noting that uh, the water is actually considered part of, part of the usable floor area. So I'm, 100% in support of the application being approved. And that's just my comments. Okay, thank you. Is there, uh, in the meantime, we will move on to see if there are anyone present or online that wishes to speak to this application. Thank you, Sam. Um, no, hearing none. The wishes of the committee? I'll move to approve, Alan. Okay, thank you, Linda. Linda moves to approve. Can I get a seconder? Bill? Okay, so file number ANPL 2023183 in the name of Kenneth and Susan Newhoff. The proposed level of relief sought would meet the four tests of a minor variance as it would neither approve, as it is, <laughs> not to change this, is it? as it would be appropriate <laughs> and minor appropriate and minor and would comply with the intent of the zoning bylaw so let me run that by you again after my corrections the proposed level of relief sought would meet the four tests of a minor variance and would be appropriate and minor and in nature and comply with the intent of the zoning bylaw. Right? 
Got that. Okay. All in favor, Tim. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So usually I, you know, I respect uh, planning and I see where they're coming from with their thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to move to approve just because I look at all the pictures and all the buildings down there. And they already moved it. Well, that's fine. Okay. But I'm just saying that the cat's far out of the bag. So how can you tell one to do it and not the other? Okay. So I will, yes. You'll support the motion. Correct? Yes. That's what I'm asking. Okay. So all in favor to approve, Tim. That's a yes. Okay. And Linda, yes. Yes. And Phil? Phil? Yes. And myself. That's carried. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for coming. You're welcome. Okay, next up is file number AMPL 2023-213, Linda and Patrick Mulrooney. And the planner can give the report, please. Thank you. Through the chair, presenting on behalf of one of my colleagues, an application has been received to convert an existing deck to a sunroom requiring relief of 1.26 meters and required rear yard setback of 7.5 meters to permit a rear yard setback of 6.24 meters. The subject lands are situated in the northeast of Port Dover at the intersection of Cockshut Road and concession to Woodhouse. The lot has an area of 644 square meters with frontage on Colby Drive and is currently occupied by a single family dwelling with a lot coverage of approximately 29%. The rear of the land use is a stormwater management pond. The level of the level of relief sought, 1.26 meters out of a required rear yard setback of 7.5, is in this instance considered by staff minor given the lot backs onto a stormwater management pond and the nearest residential neighbor to the rear is over 20 meters away. It is the professional opinion of staff this development is appropriate for the site and would conform with the intents of the PPS, the official plan and zoning bylaws, and recommend for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And the applicant is present, right? We'll get, we'll get to you in a second. <laughs> um, anything from the committee to the planner? Do you have anything to add? No. Okay, very good. They, For the record, they have nothing to add. Um, what are the wish? Oh, is there anyone present or online that wishes to speak to this application? Hearing none. Uh, what are the wishes of the committee? Bill and a seconder, Tim. Yeah. <laughs> By default, because you're here. Yeah, that's okay. So well, I won't leave you, Linda. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so yes. Yeah, so file number AMPL two zero two three two one three. Name of Patrick and Linda Mulrooney has been moved to to approve by Phil and seconded by Tim. The proposed relief meets the four tests of a minor variance section set out by section 45.1 of the Planning Act for the following reasons. The requested variance is deemed minor in nature. The requested variance is desirable for the appropriate development of the lands. The requested variance maintains the general intent of the purpose of the zoning bylaw. The requested variance maintains the general intent and purpose of the official plan. All in favor? Tim? Yes. Bill? Yes. Linda? Yes. Thank you. And myself. And that is carried. And approved. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Okay, next up. File number BNPL 2023197 in the name of Dennis Van Horn. And the planner can give the report, please. Thank you. Through the chair, I'm presenting on behalf of one of my colleagues. An application has been received to sever a parcel having a frontage of 44 meters approximately, um, approximately width of 44 meters, depth of 121 meters, an area of 6,060 square meters, and retain a parcel as having an area of 40.6 hectares as the severance of a dwelling made surplus through farm amalgamation. The subject lands are located on the southern side of Middleton North Walsingham Town Line Road. It is an agricultural lot located east of the hamlet of South Middleton. The area of the subject lands is approximately 407,000 square meters with um, frontage on Middle North Walsingham Town Line Road. And they're occupied by a detached dwelling, accessory building, 
and agricultural barns used for arable farm storage. The applicant has proposed a lot size which does exceed the minimum lot size of 2,000 square meters as stated in the zoning bylaw of Norfolk County by about 3,000 square meters. Whilst the proposed rear boundary could be slightly closer to the rear of the garage to meet the minimum zoning bylaw standards, the lot area is not considered to be excessive and does not result in the loss of any cultivated farmland. It would also provide a small additional buffer between the barns and the surplus dwelling. Therefore, it is staff's opinion that the new lot is limited to a minimum size needed to accommodate the use and will not significantly impact upon any existing cultivated land and that the proposed application meets the intent of both the Planning Act and the Provincial Policy Statement and Official Plan. Um, and there are no anticipated deficiencies in terms of the zoning bylaw. So staff in this case are recommending the file for approval subject to the conditions and attachment one of the report. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there an agent or applicant present? Okay, thank you. We'll get to you in a sec. Is there anything from the committee or the planner? Does the agent have anything to add? Hi there. More? I, I just want clarification about condition number eight. The existing farm access through the lands to be severed shall be closed beyond the rear lot line of the severed lot and the new farm access formed. Is yes. that the one? Yes. Okay. So there's already two existing entrances on the farm right. to the west, one of which the municipality has put in a culvert. So there's there's no need to uh, block up that access. There's already two driveways that have been in place for at least one of them for 100 years, thereabouts. So. I'd okay. like the removal of that condition. Can I get a comment from the planner? Sure, thank you. So through the chair, um, often we see these conditions. So there's two parts of the condition. One is to sever the connection between the entrance of the seven and retained. Um, I would suggest that part of the condition be maintained. Um, so that can be done if you're curious on the mechanisms. It can be, um, if there's gravel, it be removed and top seeded and soiled through grass. Um, or some sort of a, a physical barrier be placed. So there's a separation between the two lots. Um, as for the existence of prior entrances, um, if I'd be comfortable removing the wording of that part of the condition subject to the review of the development engineering staff, uh, because they're the ones who often add conditions for entrances um, and they have the tools to confirm and review that those entrances are appropriate. Okay. Thanks. Thank so, you. So is that there are no there are no farm vehicles that can make their way through that physically because of the size of modern farm equipment. It's not an option. So to try to blockade that back portion is just going to be unnecessary expense. It can't be physically used currently. So it's not an issue currently if the severance wasn't granted. So you're saying well, you'd want the, the condition removed altogether anyway? Re removed altogether. Okay, can I get a comment from uh, anything from the, the committee on that? No. So you, Hannah, so you're saying you, you prefer to leave part of the condition in <coughs> um, with development engineering commenting on it? Is that how I understood that? Sure, thank you. So through the chair, I'm just reading the condition out loud so it's transparent. Mm -hmm. The existing farm ants, I'll try that again. The existing farm access through the lands to be severed shall be closed beyond the rear lot line of the severed lot. Um, so I would recommend maintaining that part of the condition. We can add words for clarity. Um, so the mechanism of how it's cleared is, is more transparent. Um, and then the second part is and a new farm access be formed. Um, I would be comfortable removing that um, or adding language to the effect of. Um, subject like to subject consultation with develop development engineering. Yes, thank you. Would that satisfy you? First so, of all, so let me ask you this before you answer that. Yes, all right. Do you intend to form another entrance anyway? There are two. There is not I'm an. Sorry, yes, you did say. There that. is no entrance there currently. Am I accurate in that? The the two farm entrances are on the west side. So, so you don't need it. So there's no the, the semantics of the existing farm access. There is no farm access. Okay. So that whole condition, I don't want to get into uh, 
any type of conflict or having any disagreement with engineering about how to satisfy that condition. And we've been through that before with other conditions. So I would request that it just be removed. Ahmed. Uh, Judy, do you have the sketch in the presentation? No. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So in the drawing through Ms. Lindy, you have your hand up? Oh, I couldn't hear anything, but I, I do now. Okay. Did you have a comment or a question? No, I just wasn't hearing anything, so I I wasn't sure if there was technical issues. Sure thing, Dennis. Yeah. Come up to the podium, please. Okay. Uh, uh, just wait till you get to the microphone. Oh, sorry. I've been renting that farm for approximately 15 to 18 years, and we do not use that driveway. We're always using the access to the west just because equipment's too big. The driveway's narrow. So to say that a, a, another driveway needs, we haven't used that one in 15 years. The same owner is going to be staying in the house. Um, and I'm the same, I'm the guy that's renting, so, and I'll be farming it. So, um, we still will continue not to use that. It's never been an issue before. So that's why I think we were trying to get the whole thing out because it didn't make sense, but. Right. Okay. Anything else from the committee? Just a note, I had asked, uh, the planner to come out and physically inspect the property to, so we could address some of these things okay and there was no willingness to do that there was which there was no agreement to do that i had asked on more than one occasion so we could go out there see the lay of the land and just address any issues okay and my request was never honored really okay all right um what are the uh, well i have to go through that let me go through the anything else from the committee on this for now, is there anyone else that wishes to speak to this application for or against present presently or online? Hearing none, um, what are the wishes of the committee on this uh, condition for starters? Linda? I'll move to remove it. Okay. Tim? I was gonna move to keep it, so. I guess we'll have to vote. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, well, OK. So you, you, you'd you you'd want to keep the condition in totally or remove the last part of the I would farm keep, access. I would keep it farm. in as as far uh, the the farm access point that the planning is confirmed that they are willing to drop that. But when it comes to the blocking off of the road, the existing road, I just see that being a nightmare for an easement problem down the road and it should be blocked off whether it be by grass or what have you. The only thing I would ask of planning is to give an exact as to what they expect, because you said you've had problems before as what they consider an exact block, whether they want to give you a drawing, whether they want to give you it in writing. If it's got to be grass, it can be grass, it can be whatever. 
but leaving an existing road from one property to another is just asking for a nightmare down the road with next owners. It, it's it's not a, a road to be clear. It's a little gravel driveway and it can be used because I went there. You can go and park your vehicle there at the back of the house. It's not an access point to the farm. This has been 15 years. And as far as easements, you cannot just create an easement uh, in the land title system. So it would have to come back to this committee. So that's not an issue. Turn the mic on, please. Just in my personal opinion, mm -hmm. it becomes nightmares down the road. Yeah, but you can. But as far as an easement suddenly being created, it would have to come back to this committee. Okay, so we have a motion on the floor from Linda to remove the condition altogether. And I guess that a motion to approve it with the condition removed, uh, Linda? Well, I think we could maybe just vote on the the condition first. Okay. And then once we okay. decide, make a decision on that, then we'll deal with the application. Okay. So we have a motion to remove condition eight. And I need a, well, a mover is Linda. Can I get a seconder for that motion? And the chair can't make a, mo can't make a seconder, so. No, okay, so there's, so there's no seconder, so that dies on the table. Right. Amend to amend the condition with the new farm access form. Take that, that take that out. So Phil moves that. And can I get a seconder for that motion? Tim. Tim will second that. Okay. So all in favor of removing, and I will quote, I'll read the whole uh, condition. The existing farm access through the lands to be severed shall be closed beyond the rear lot line of the severed lot, period. And then the part that we're removing, a new farm access form formed, right? Okay, all in favor, Linda? Yes. Bill? Tim. Yeah. Okay. And that part is carried. You're you're taking notes of a. <laughs> so that part. We're getting it's all chicken scratch at this point. So now we will go to the motion to the application itself. Can I get a mover and a seconder to to do what? I'll Tim move moves. to approve. Oh, okay. Tim moves to approve. I'll second that. Linda will second it. So file number BMPL 20231970 in the name of Dennis Van Horn. Tim moves to approve, seconded by Linda. This application is consistent with the provincial policy statement, complies with the policies of the Norfolk County official plan regarding the creation of a lot within the agricultural area and meets the intent of the zoning bylaw and condition as amended. Condition eight, so let me jot that down. All in favor, Tim? Yes. Bill? Yes. Linda? Yes. Myself, and that's carried. And approved. And signed. Okay, thank you. Okay, next up. File number ANPL. 2023144 in the name of, and I'm sorry if I get your name wrong. Uh, I'm not even going to attempt it. <laughs> Diedrich Wall. And the planner can get the report, please. Thank you. Through the chair, an application has been received uh, to seek relief of 4.4% in lot coverage above the 10% 
allowable for a small agricultural lot for total lot coverage of 14.4%. And I'm presenting on behalf of my colleague. The subject lands are located on the southeast side of Glenmire Road within the hamlet designation of Glenmire and within the agricultural zone. The area of the subject lands is approximately 752 square meters with approximately 23 meters of frontage on Glenmire Road. The subject lands are occupied by an existing single detached story, single story detached dwelling and an existing accessory shed slash outbuilding to the rear of the site. Under the, under the zoning bylaws, a small agricultural lot can have an accessory structure with a usable floor area of 200 square meters or a lot coverage of 10%, whichever is smaller. Given the small lot size, this 10% coverage is lower, resulting in the needed, the needed relief of 4.4% lot coverage. This is considered minor in this instance and appropriate for this residential lot outside of the Hamlet boundary. The proposal would comply with the intents of the PPS official plan and would comply with all the other provisions of the zoning bylaw. And as such, staff recommend this application for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there an applicant or agent present? Okay, get to you in a second. Uh, any questions from the committee to the planner? No? The, do you have anything to add? Okay, fine. The applicant says no. Is there anyone present or online that wishes to speak to this application? Hearing none, what are the wishes of the committee? Bill moves to approve. Seconded by. Tim. File number AMPL 2023144 in the name of Mr. Diedrich Wall. <laughs> Um, in accordance with section 45.1 of the Planning Act, the requested relief is considered appropriate for the proposed de development. Minor nature maintains the general intent of the official plan and the zoning bylaw and all in favor, Tim and Phil, yep, and Linda. Yes. Thank you, and myself, and that's carried and approved. There you go. Through the chair. Um, I might just interject and ask for maybe a five minute recess for a small break. Yes, please. Thanks. Thank you.
Okay, we're back. Linda, you good? I'm good, yep. Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so. Okay. Okay, so next up, file number BNPL 2023085, the name of Dilip Shah, and the planner can get the report, please. Thank you. Through the chair, an application has been received to sever a parcel having a frontage of approximately 38 meters with the 53 meters depth of 152 meters in an area of 8,448 square meters or 2.08 acres and retain a parcel having an area of 10,735 square meters or 2.7 acres as the creation of a lot in the agricultural designation. The subject lands are located north of the intersection of Norfolk Street South and St. John's Road East. And the lands are currently occupied by a single detached dwelling and some trees. The lands have recently been subject of two previous severance applications from a previous property owner, file numbers being BNPL 2021-109 and BNPL 2021-313 to facilitate the creation of two residential lots. The planner's report identified a range of concerns at that time, addressing that the proposal did not conform to the provincial policy statement and official plan, and as such recommended refusal. And that recommendation was carried by the Committee of Adjustment of refusal for both severances on November 17th, 2021. The proposal today differs in that a single lot is proposed to be severed. Um, and it's the understanding of staff through the submission is for a future storage container facility. During a pre-consultation held with staff in November of 23rd, 2022, planning staff identified to the applicant um, that in order to facilitate that use, the following planning applications would be required and should be considered considered by council in advance of the subject severance application to ensure appropriate land use permissions are established. So that would be a zoning bylaw amendment, um, an official plan amendment and site plan application. Um, so to clarify the proposal discussed during the pre-consultation meeting did not include the subject severance. So this consideration was reiterated to the proponent upon receipt of the consent to sever application. And to date, none of the required applications to facilitate the use have been received to date. And as such, no decisions by council have been made or delegated approval through the planning department have been granted. A comment was received by a member of the public um, through the chair, may I summarize? Please do. Sure, so to keep it brief, it outlines some concerns th with the proposed use in this location. With that noted, um, the proposal today for our consideration is for a severance. So not the proposed future use. The use is for council to consider. The subject lands are designated agricultural with a site specific policy area 7.2.5.9. And they have two zones. So one is zoned rural commercial with a site specific provision 14.20. And the other is open space the holding with site specific provision 14.760. The subject application proposes to sever a lot for the creation, for the purposes of lot creation for what is understood to be a non-agricultural use. It does not conform to the provincial policy statement or official plan, and as such, planning staff are recommending refusal. Should the committee pass a decision of approval, um, draft conditions two through four have been added requiring the zoning, official plan, and site plan application be complete and receive approval. Um, but just noting staff maintain the opinion that land use permissions should be established prior to consents to sever where appropriate. Um, and adding these conditions can have the unintended effect of the committee giving direction to council in advance of public notification and decision. Um, but more, most importantly, it just, it doesn't conform to the provincial policy statement official plan. Uh, we also received a letter from the applicant, which I believe was circulated to committee members in advance. Yep. Um, so that was a request for a deferral and um, that decision is up to committee. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there an applicant or agent present or online? 
no. OK. Any questions of the committee? Linda? No. No. OK, sorry. I thought you were. No, sorry. OK. Um, I do remember this application coming across and I did not support it then and uh, I would not support it again. Uh, I agree that um, I think they're uh, putting the cart ahead of the horse here in this instance. And uh, anyway, that's just my commentary. Um, is there anyone that wishes to speak to this application for or against online or presently? Um, OK, so what are the wishes of the committee? I get it. so they've asked for a deferral now, uh, Anna. Oh, sorry. Yes, through the chair, the request is for a deferral. And um, to clarify, so a deferral, not referral, a deferral <laughs> delays the application for a specific date. So nothing about the application changes. A referral, the application will change, it's recirculated and it's scheduled to the next available meeting date given when we receive information and recirculate. Okay. So I know we've had some confusion on re and D. So the I, wishes of the committee now are? I just have a question. So if we defer it, did, did they say why they wanted it deferred? Through the chair, um, so I can read the letter that's been submitted. So, dear committee members, we received the staff recommendation report with respect to the proposed land severance and we request a deferral of the subject application to provide us with an opportunity to work with planning department towards the submission of a new development application for the retained lands. Um, speaking personally from discussing this with the applicant through email, my understanding is they want to submit, um, I think it's a new concept plan and a new letter describing the use. Um, and their intention is to affect the conditions, specifically the conditions for the approval of a zoning bylaw amendment, official plan amendment, and site plan. Um, but just to make a note as planning staff, regardless of the use, it doesn't meet the policies of the provincial policy statement and official plan for the separation of the lot. Thank you. Okay. Linda? Uh, that's that's fine. I, I just wondered if it was being deferred so they could submit the application to council for the zoning bylaw amendment. Well, but it doesn't sound like that's could be case. that could be possible too, I guess. So uh, we have a recommendation for a deferral. What are the wishes of the committee? Hmm? I'm sorry. Sorry, just to clarify, is it are you asking about the recommendation from planning? Yeah, a recommendation of deferral. A refusal on the a report. Refusal. Okay, so yeah. we have a, a choice of refusal or deferral. Um, what are the wishes of the committee? Mr. Chair, uh, did you ask for any comments from public or oh, I'm from sorry, yes, you, you're you're ahead of me. Yes. So is there anybody that wishes to speak to this application for or against presently or online? No. OK. Again, what are the wishes of the committee? Refer a refusal or deferral is the. Uh, the two options on the table so far. And OK, can I just clarify if we defer it? You uh, Hannah said that it would be re deferred to a particular date. Do we know no, that's a, that's a referral would be. Uh, Sorry. OK. You're the chair, that's correct. So a deferral will delay the application for a specific articulated date. OK. A referral is a change in the application um, that is recirculated to staff for their review. The report might change. We do another site visit and the date is not identified. We can try and do it as quickly as possible, but those are the distinctions. So OK. Yeah. Linda. Well, I have no problem deferring it um, if that's the what the applicants requesting. Um, yes. I'll I'll move to defer. Okay. 
Linda moves to defer seconder. No, no seconder. Try another motion. OK, Phil moves to refuse. Can I get a seconder? Another um, alternative, please. Yeah. <laughs> but they're asking for they're asking for a deferral. We've gotten tossed up in the language here in the last couple of meetings between referral and deferral. There is a big difference. Do we have to go with what they asked for? No, you can ref you can refuse it if you like, but um, no, 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 yeah, no. So I, I but I like this committee likes to work with the applicants as best yeah. we can. No, of course. So what I would say is we offer or I'll make a motion to refer it. That way it can go back to whomever it needs to go back to and actually get the attention it needs. I get a comment from the planner. No, I think you understand the the definitions. Um, so again. The proposal is to create a severance in the agricultural designation. Um, the provincial policy statement and official plan are very restrictive towards those intents. So unless the concept of the proposal changed so significantly that it was for an agricultural purpose, which I don't want to speak on the agent, maybe that will happen. But my professional opinion is, is that it's not supported by policy through the province or the official plan. Well, some history i do recall like i said the application coming forward twice before back in 20, 2021 and we refused them both times because they were trying to take a lot out of the agricultural zone so it's basically the same type of application again it's a repeat i wouldn't refuse i wouldn't support a anything but a refusal pretty much at this point that's just my commentary who has a motion of again we have to do something with this application so uh someone needs to propose either accept what's been put forward either a, a referral a deferral a referral or refusal who's uh who's willing to uh i'll move to refuse okay so linda moves to refuse and a seconder? Bill is a seconder. Okay. Just a second here. So file number BMPL 20230085 in the name of Dilip Shah. I hope I have that right, Mr. Shah. The application has been moved by Linda, seconded by Phil to refuse. All in favor? Tim, yes. Linda, yep. Yes. And Phil? Yep. And myself and that is carried and refused oops stamped the wrong one oops <laughs> we're having a great night here okay so that one's done next up file number bmpl 20231176 in the name of john lennox 2079095 ontario limited and the planner can give the report please Thank you. Through the chair, I am presenting on behalf of my colleague. An application has been received to sever a parcel having a frontage of approximately 597 meters and width of the same, and a regular depth of 240 to 610 meters, and an area of 65 acres or 26.41 hectares, and retain a parcel having an area of 133 acres for the future development of 701 residential units by way of an associated draft plan of condominium, file number 28CD2005-04. The subject lands are located to the south of concession to Woodhouse and north of Highway 6 to the east of Port Dover. The site has an area of approximately 80.5 hectares. Approximately 54 hectares of the lot is within the urban residential designation with a zone of um, R4 with a holding. Um, there are also some areas of hazard lands and open space. The eastern section of the site is approximately 26 hectares and it's in the agricultural zone and designation with an existing farm building to the northeastern corner of the site. 
The proposed severance would result in the section of land within the agricultural zone and designation being severed from the section of land within the urban residential designation in R4 with a holding zone. As such, it's not an agricultural severance in the true sense. It's regularizing a boundary between the different uses and designations um, and would not result in any loss of agricultural land. Staff are the opinion that amending the existing law configuration to form an agricultural unit separate to the residential zone section of the lot would benefit both the retained lands and the severed agricultural lot. Um, it also support the future development of the part of the subject lands within the urban residential designation and R4 zone. It is noted that a separate agricultural lot formed through the severance would be deficient in terms of lot size and as such a condition requiring a minor variance application has been included in the conditions in attachment one of the report. With that said, it staff's opinion that the proposed application meets the intent of the Planning Act, the provincial policy statement and official plan. And with the condition requiring a minor variance to account for lot size deficiency, the proposal would also conform to the intent of the zoning bylaws and is recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Is there an agent or applicant present? Thank you. We'll get to you in a second. Any questions from the committee? I just have one question, Alan. Um, Go ahead. Through you, the chair. With um, regards to water, is there capacity available now in Port Dover? Um, so through the chair, my comments will be brief. I'm speaking as a planner and not someone who works in the engineering department or the environmental services department. Um, so I don't really have much of a comment, just that it's addressed through a site by site. Specific I think it's there. <laughs> way to put it. Anything from Mohammed? So Mr. Chair, yeah, I, I just add that uh, right now we still have water constraints, water service constraints in Port Dover. Um, um, there is no capacity at this moment. The only few capacity it can have is a very case by cases for individual units, not for developments, new developments. Okay. Okay. So my, with regards to that, my question, quite frequently we would see in the conditions, there would be a condition um, in the past, relating to the water capacity and uh, something that maybe would re say something to the effect that no building permits would be issued or I don't know there's I've seen conditions there before that's not, and I don't see it here that's why I was asking so is that an oversight or it's not an issue so through the chair um to clarify a a portion of the lands which is slated to be developed through this condominium is affected by a holding provision. So the applicant through the planning process will need to do the necessary works to address that holding provision. So they can't go and get a building permit off right off the top. Thanks. So the holding provision covers off that type okay. of thing. Okay. okay, thank you. Do you have anything to add? <clears throat> Good evening, Mr. Chair, uh, committee members and Norfolk County staff. My name is Chris Baird. I'm the agent for the the uh, owner of the, the property. Um, I would like to perhaps address uh, Linda's uh, comment specifically as it relates to uh, the availability of water. Currently at this point, this is just a, a, uh, a severance application. The owner is very much uh, aware of the constraints that uh, exist here in Norfolk County. This is really for the future development. And we, we have a full confidence that uh, there will be water capacity at some point in the future. Um, there is a provision, Linda, uh, number two in the conditions uh, that just states that um, the owner will uh, receive or pr produce an undertaking acknowledging that they understand um, a building permit will not be issued until municipal water servicing capacity is awarded by uh, public works or yeah, yeah. Environmental and infrastructure the services. And engineering, to call it that. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Mr. Chair. Um, the only comment I would ask uh, through the chair is that uh, we've reviewed the report. It's very thorough. We thank uh, staff for their work on that. Uh, we're in full agreement with the recommendations. Um, we've reviewed the conditions that are before you tonight, and we would request consideration of 1B, which refers to cash in lieu of parkland dedication. 
uh, we suggest is very premature at this point. This is just a severance until this committee or perhaps council has an opportunity to see draft plans and start to uh, see some future potential arrangements. Talking about cash in lieu of parkland at this point would be very premature. We fully expect to engage with the county planning department um, when the time is right for that. So this is just perhaps to use your term, Mr. Chair, cart before the horse, that we will revisit that at a future date when the, when the time is appropriate. Uh, we would like to recommend if 1B from those conditions could be removed at this point. Okay. Comment from planning? Oh, Mr. Chair, yeah, I can I can uh, provide a reply. Uh, this is a very standard condition for severance, which is I believe five hundred dollars. Um, it's not based on the actual price of the land. So once um, the new development will comes in, at that point we'll identify the actual value of the land, and based on that we'll have the um, um, the parkland dedication or cash and loo at that point. Okay. But right now it is just for severance as a as a standard. Um, $500 fee Okay. as Parkland dedication. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, just again for clarification, yep. Mohammed, thank you. So so 1B uh, strictly relates to $500 in terms of fulfilling all these conditions? Um, for the cash in Parkland, it is $500. Richard, is that $500, right? Yeah. Uh, similarly noted in four, it talks about the drainage assessment reapportionment at $640. That's, those are one-time fees for for that. We can certainly those are one-time fee for yeah. this severance only. Yeah. Okay. So the 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 parkland cash and loop parkland is five hundred dollar fee, it's not a flat for a lot. Fee. Yeah, it's a flat fee for the severance. Okay. Very good. We can we can fully accept that then as they're prepared. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Is that it. Very good. Anything else from the committee? No. Linda, you good? I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Is there anyone present or online that wishes to speak to this application, please? Hearing none, what are the wishes of the committee? Move to approve, Phil. Seconded by Tim, thank you. So file number BNPL 20231762079059095 Ontario Limited Care of John Lennox. The file, this application has been moved by Phil, seconded by Tim to approve. This application is consistent with the provincial policy statement, complies with the policies of the Norfolk County official plan regarding the creation of a lot within an agricultural area and meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. All in favor, Tim? Yeah. And Linda? Yep. Phil? Yep. And myself, and that's carried. And approved. Thank you. Okay, so next up we have file number BNPL 2023198, Jaron Francis and Caitlin Laforme. And the planner can give the report, please. Thank you. Through the chair, an application has been received to sever a parcel having no frontage, a width of approximately 36 meters, a depth of 13 meters and an area of 478 square meters and retain a parcel having an area of 130 hectares as a boundary adjustment. And lands are to be added to the existing residential lot located immediately adjacent to the west. The subject lands are located near the intersection of Cockshut Road and Concession 3 Townsend. The purpose of this application is to sever a parcel of land and transfer it to a residential lot um, having an area of 2,792 square meters resulting in the lot having a final approximate area of 3,270 square meters. The lands are both designated and zoned agricultural. Um, just off the top, I wanna to note, um, so the application itself makes reference to proposed works associated with an IUWS station. Um, just to note that these works have not been complete and any potential sale of the lands to Norfolk County has not been initiated or approved by Council as of the writing of this report. So that proposed project will be considered independently through its own process with the Realty Services Department and through a decision by Norfolk County's Council, um, and it doesn't have any bearing on the evaluation of this proposal. As we are all familiar with, the Provincial Policy Statement and Official Plan permits boundary adjustments in prime agricultural areas for legal or technical reasons. 
the lands to be severed are described as being presently used for agricultural. Um, the letter has been submitted by the applicant in attachment two, which identifies the technical reason for the boundary adjustment is for two key reasons. So one being a deficiency in the rear lot line setback for the single detached dwelling, detached garage, well, pool, and pool deck. And the second reason is due to the setback distance between the residential lots well and rear lot line um, conflicts with what are called best management practices. And these, I'm going to call them BMPs for simplicity, are identified by the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, or OMAFRA, which recommend a minimum 15 meter distance between a well and a source of contamination. So the intention is that it can't meet that distance. Um, and the applicant provided excerpts from two BMP manuals on water wells and O Regulation 903. Um, I've accessed the water well record for the property that's benefiting. That's included in attachment four. Um, that's through the Ministry of Environment, Conservation and Parks open data catalog. Um, so through O Reg 903, whenever a well is being installed by a qualified professional, um, it needs to be submitted to that record. Um, and then also through the building process, um, whenever a septic system is installed, it needs to comply with setback requirements for any wells on the property to address any concerns for contamination. So this is a really interesting case. Um, and I just wanna start by thanking the applicant for working really hard and working with me and trying to address all the conditions and concerns and thoughts. Um, so these lands are typical to Norfolk County. So it's it's a residential lot that directly abuts an agricultural lot that's actively being used for agricultural purposes. I think we know that there's hundreds of, if not thousands of lots like this. Um, and likely the lands to benefit were created in the past through maybe a historic severance from the surrounding farm parcel. So staff support the continued use of normal farm practices and the protection of public health and safety. Um, but I just want to highlight this concern when it comes to the well would be an extremely common experience across rural lots in Norfolk County, Ontario. Recognizing that there is a historic and continued pressure of agricultural land fragmentation and encroachment of non-agricultural uses on prime agricultural areas in both Norfolk County and Ontario. Um, my recommendation is that evaluating best management practices as a technical reason for the expansion of a residential lot should be approached cautiously and through verifiable means. Um, so this would mean a survey to confirm the distance of the well and well water testing, as it has a strong opportunity to create a precedence for future owners to expand the residential lots up to 15 meters or roughly 50 feet. I also want committee members to understand today that best management practices are not regulation, legislation or code. They are informational booklets of suggested practices for farmers and homeowners alike that discuss a wide variety of topics, which include well water, but also include a range of topics like um, managing dead stock, tilling, nutrient management. Um, and then BMPs for wells themselves talk a lot about well maintenance. So the responsibility is often on the homeowner. Agricultural inputs from normal farm practices have the potential to lead to contamination, which cause a negative impact to human health. Um, but again, there's a range of variables which can cause contamination, like beyond the distance of a well to a potential contaminant. So we're thinking the type of contaminants, how deep the well is, what the well is constructed of, the grade of the well, infiltration rates, soil type, etc. With all that said, I am of the opinion that a genuine concern for groundwater contamination caused by normal agricultural practices and any building permits issued in error by a municipality which does not conform to the zoning bylaw are genuine technical reasons. So for that, I'm recommending approval. Conditions two through four were added to ensure the proposed boundary adjustment is for a technical reason that is verifiable and minor. Um, so it requires to demonstrate there's contaminants present in the drinking water, which exceed the standards identified in the Ontario Drinking Water Quality Standards, and that's O Regulation 169-03, thus necessitating an increase in distance between the well and the rear lot line. Um, and that condition has been drafted in consultation or in correspondence with 
staff from the MECP. So that's the ministry that regulates wells and also the health unit. So that's kind of to make sure that that is a, a fair scientific basis to review contamination by. Um, and then that the proposed lot doesn't exceed the minimum set best setback distances of the well itself. Um, and then the buildings or structures. Um, condition five can be removed following feedback from Realty Services Department. Um, the only things to add, so the applicant has provided me more information um, on the 19th and today. So I have um, a survey that's been done. Um, it was circulated to the committee, but I have paper copies as well. Um, and then we also have a certificate of analysis from the laboratory. So I have paper copies of that as well. Um, and then I also, so I reviewed all those things and then I created like a spreadsheet that essentially reviews existing true zoning deficiencies and then the amount of land that would be required to address those. Um, and then the same thing for the well. So I have that available um, for review. In short, um, if we recognize BMPs as a technical reason um, and we are comfortable with contamination being proven, um, the depth required to address the deficiency would be 10.44 meters, not 13. Um, and then similarly, the, the greatest deficiency I found um, was for the attached garage and that's 4.5 meters. So it's a little bit less than what they're asking, but um, that's what I'm seeing. So that is one way we could do it is amend the proposal or the decision to reflect what's required either through the zoning bylaw or best management practices, whatever you guys prefer. Um, and then the only thing I'll end with is from my understanding, the certificate from the laboratory um, does not show that there is contamination. Um, I would like to keep the condition to give the applicant an opportunity to continue to demonstrate that. Regular mm -hmm. testing is an expected thing of well owners, but um, I leave the decision to the committee. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, and the applicant is present and an agent. Okay. Uh, any questions from the committee? Okay, hearing none, do you have anything to add? Please, please step up to the podium, state your name for the record, and uh, you're the agent. Okay, all right. Turn the uh, button on the right. There you go. Good evening. Uh, my name is Caitlin Laforme, and so I wanted to express our concern with the first. Um, uh, condition regarding well water testing showing contamination um, within the provincial planning document it indicates that you are to protect preserve and um, restore vulnerable groundwater and that's what we're dealing with is that vulnerable well water um, so to remove that condition allows us to protect the water as it is now um, and to still abide by the amount of space that we do need um, we have small children And so it's our job to protect them. Sure. Thank you. That can be moved up. Jared Francis here. I am owner of 1366 Cotshut Road along with Caitlin LaForm here. Um, so as stated, one of the conditions within um, the process of approval here was to prove contamination of the well water. From our perspective, as you know, Kay was alluding to there, it should really be about protecting the potential contamination of well water, not necessarily showing that there is contamination in the well water. Naturally, I'm sure anybody in this room, myself or otherwise, would not want to see contamination until you do something about contamination. So I didn't want to add that there. Um, with that being said, Kim, anything that you want to add? Kim Smith, owner, pay dirt. Uh, Inc. And um, we are requesting, I just want to make one note first. Uh, I also submitted from the Ministry of the Environment their well sitting and their well sitting requirements. And their well sitting requirements um, 
is uh, for a drilled well with watertight casing that extends to a depth of more than six meters is 15 meters from a source of contaminants. So that's from MOE. So, and that falls under, uh, Hannah worked very well with us and just asked us to submit things to prove for technical. So that was my responsibility. And um, that was an expert excerpt from the province of Ontario Environment and Energy drinking water supply, water supply wells requirements and best, best practices. But it says require regulatory requirements while sitting. And that's what that's stated under. So and you were given those copies. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's yeah. there. So our request is um, we have already had um, the lot have a survey sketch which we've submitted to Hannah mm -hmm. and that sketch showed the deficiencies. And so we're asking that conditions one and two be removed as we've shown um, that technical reason. Okay. And we're asking that number four be uh, removed as we've pro, uh, shown best management practice plus a regulatory mm -hmm. as requested. And I agree with both Caitlin and Jaron that we don't, I was hoping that we didn't <laughs> find any contamination because, uh, you know, as being the owner of that contamination, it was not going to be a fun time. So um, I am I am in agreement with them that we shouldn't be trying to find contamination. We should be hoping we don't find it and then prevent it. Right. So as a preventative and um, many, many times we have many, many acres in Norfolk County and um, they are by far our closest well by far. Okay. So and um, the only reason I even noticed all this is because I was out measuring a lot for the IUWS and there was so much encroachment um, on the west side of the proposed property. Like there's a propane tank sitting on my property, not on their lot, but on, on a, a side lot. And so then I started doing more measurements and more measurements and more measurements. And that's why I found there were such deficiencies, okay. which I can see how they happen because in the building permit, the, the house location is directly like square perpendicular to the road and then it's been rotated. And I don't know how that fell through, but um, it did. Mm -hmm. So that is why there's those deficiencies. So but that that's the request of us is to remove two, three, and four as and three we and four. Okay. yeah we've submitted the sketch from uh, Mike Yo uh, did it for us quickly and uh, we have submitted that to Hannah and she has copies for you okay, and so that's a survey sketch and there are comments Mike made comments Mike Yo did it for us and he okay. made comments on that well, I just got a comment from planning on what we've heard and what we've got received uh, today. And um, I just, let me ask a question quickly. Uh, the the of, well, the of well. Planning? Of planning? Yeah. Okay. The well report from the lab shows no contamination, correct? That's correct. Okay. So your comments, Hannah, to all this documentation that we've, is it is it satisfying? The conditions um, so far. Sorry, could you rephrase the question? So all the documentation that they've submitted yesterday and today, does it submit as pertaining to conditions two, three, and four? Does that satisfy the conditions? Thank you. I guess that's why I'm asking. It's okay. Um, so through the chair, uh, condition two has been fulfilled. So they've done the survey. Um, but what I would flag is that the amount requested exceeds what is required to address the zoning deficiencies for some of the things. Okay. So if you if you look on the bottom, the lowest table um, that highlights that piece, what's actually required to address that. Of your spreadsheet. Of my spreadsheet, yes. Right. Um, condition three, um, yes, that's been that's been satisfied. They've submitted a survey, um, but like the structures and buildings, the amount requested exceeds what would be 
suggested through the best management practices for contaminants. For condition four, they have submitted a well water test, but the test does not demonstrate contaminants. So the question to the committee is, do you want to approve an expansion of a residential lot for potential contaminants, recognizing the feedback I've received from the MECP is it's it's unlikely, but in drafting these conditions, we hadn't received the well record. We hadn't received the survey. So this is all very new. So I've been trying to work with the applicants um, professionally and personally. I think it sets a pretty dangerous precedence if we don't have proof um, based on how I've seen encroachment happen over time for agricultural properties. Um, and I think it may not weigh other parts of best management practices in that document for wells themselves when it comes to well maintenance, the type of wells, yeah. regular testing. Um, and then the last thing I'll note is contamination. There's chemical contaminants. So we're looking at nitrates and um, agricultural inputs like glyphosate. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to be fine. And then there's also bacterial contaminants. So the health unit will measure those for you for free. And if anyone owns a well, you likely are doing that regularly. It's what you should be doing. Sure. Anyways, I'll leave it at that. Okay. Um, thank you. Thank you. Um, any other questions from the committee? Just a second. Yeah. Linda, you? No, I'm you okay? good. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Apologies. No. Nope. But uh, the other, uh, I just wanted to speak to the booster station going into. So this also creates a bit of a buffer for them from the booster station that'll be uh, put in by Norfolk County too. Right. So that was part of the, I asked the other landowner, but he said, I don't care. My house is for sale. So, so I didn't care either because he's the guy that did the deficiencies. So, so just be thoroughly honest. Okay. Okay. I think we've got all the information for now. Go ahead. Just while you're taking into consideration, I don't know if I did say it, but in the provincial planning statement 2.2 underwater, that was where my comment was about protection, um, prevention of the con contamination. So it meets that requirement within your planning statement. Okay, thank you. Is there anything further from the committee? Is there anyone present or um, online that wishes to speak to this application? Hearing none, um, what are the wishes of the committee? Won't everybody jump up at once here? Let's I would uh, just um, caution the committee that I think the conditions um, should maintain as staying as they are. They are being uh, some of them are being satisfied on the on the go here, and that's fine. Um, but I think um, the planners have outlined the the cautions that they want to put in place and. Uh, and it sounds like you have a working relationship with, you know, the planners and whatnot to, to things progress this through. Please do. We'd like to have everything on the record. Okay, the county has already surveyed the boundary adjustment too. Okay. So it's it's a survey already registered. So if it changes that, then we'll have to resurvey too. But that's okay. an amendment to it. Okay. All right. So what are the wishes of the committee now? I'll move to approve. Okay, Linda. Can I get a seconder? Tim, thank you. I'm sorry? As they are. Um, so yeah, so uh, file number um, BNPL 2023198. Jaron Francis and Caitlin Laform. This motion has been moved by Linda, seconded by Tim. The application is consistent with the with the provincial policy statement, complies with the policies of the Norfolk County official plan, 
regarding the creation of a lot within the agricultural area and meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. All in favor, Tim? Yeah. Bill? Linda? Yeah. Thank you. And myself, and that's carried. And approved. Going forward. Yeah. Let's just keep working with staff uh, going forward uh, to meet the conditions as you need to. OK, thank you. OK, so next up file number. File number B ANPL 20231199 Patterson and Deborah Mouth Mouth Moth. I'm sorry. Mothy, thank you. And the planner can give the report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I'm presenting this application on behalf of my colleague. An application has been received to reconstruct an existing vacation home seeking relief of 0 0.33 hectare from the required lot area of 0 0.4 hectare to allow a lot with an area of 0 0.07 hectare. And also relief of 13.37% in lot coverage to allow for a total lot coverage of 28.37% for a vacation home. Uh, relief of 3.56 meter from required 6 meter frontier setback to allow a frontier setback of 2.44 meter. And also relief of 5.49 meter from the required nine meter rear yard setback to allow a rear yard setback of 3.51 meter. The subject lands are located to the south of Walter Street, which to the front of um, of the application site, it, which is a private, uh, which is aligning with a private right of way. There is an existing cottage on the land the lot has no frontage on a municipally owned and public road. This site presents a significant challenge with regards to the evaluation of a minor variance. Various staff have made with the proponent and outlined options and suggestions in steps in order to bring the site into compliance with applicable policies and bylaws. It was recommended that this application be paused or withdrawn dependent up upon the approach they selected. Uh, Realty Services has also confirmed that a portion of Walter Street um, adjacent to the subject loan does not conform to the section 3.11.1 of the Norfolk County Zoning Bylaw, which basically states uh, no building or structure shall be erected, altered, or enlarged on any land which does not have minimum required lot frontage on an open, constructed, and year-round improved street. Realty services have also confirmed that there is no roll number for the private portion of the Walter Street, which is fronting uh, the subject lands. Realty services have contacted to the ministry to receive the patent information for this portion of land, uh, but there is no estimate timeline uh, for when this information will, will be proved available. I think recently we got some information which uh, my colleague um, um, will provide from Realty Services Department. Road Department have also confirmed that this part of Walter Street is not maintained by the county. Norfolk County's Zoning Administrator has also reviewed this site and concurred the reality, reality, reality that Walter Street, uh, which is uh, fronting the subject lands is a private road and therefore does not comply with the definition of a street. From the zoning definition, uh, this means that it, la it lacks a frontage on a public street in occurrence with section 3.11 of the zoning bylaw. This is a basic requirement for a proposal to be considered by the committee of adjustment and the correct process which the application were informed of is to undertake an official plan amendment and a zoning bylaw amendment application. The legal opinion from the county solicitor was high level also confirmed the above. 
To this end, the building department has confirmed that no building permit would be issued for any proposed development until this matter has been addressed. Given the above, there is no um, reasonable way to assess the requested relief as it is re reliant on the lot having a legal frontage. As this is not the case, and given that the proposed rebuilt cottage encroaches into a hydro easement, staff has um, have no option but to recommend a refusal of this application. I do happy to answer any questions. Okay, thank you. Uh, and there's an agent or applicant present. Okay, just a second. Any questions from the committee? Okay, Phil, go ahead. Okay, so in in looking at this. Essentially, what the situation seems to be is they're right on a corner. And had the road been scooched over about another four feet, they would have been touching on the road, right? So, Mr. Chair, uh, right now it is at the corner of two street. One street is the staff considered that as a public street, which is basically right. at the front of the road. And there is another one which is a public stage, which is which does not adjacent to the last, which is not adjacent to the land. Okay. So it is in the elbow, but it is not connected with the public street. Okay, so Walker Street, essentially like this. So this is Walker Street. It Walker, runs like this, Walter. or Walter Street, right? And then that's that little unopened road allowance piece that they use to get in and out. And their property sits right there. So, Mr. Chair, that's what initially we identified, but later on, once we contacted the Realty Services, mm -hmm. it is confirmed that the the road you draw, Jew, is not actually the public road. So it has two parts. Okay, so this piece that goes back out to, I think it's. So that's not public. Yeah, that's, that's the private portion of private. the road. Correct. So it's got a number. So of and that is the reason. And, yep. and that is the reason. Even though it is situated at the corner, it is not fronting any public estate. So all these other places would have the same issue then, if they ever came up for reconstruction or anything. Correct. Right. Okay. I just wonder because there's another. There's a 15 Walker. Or Walter. Even further in. Right. So. Okay, I get it. Okay. Um, anything else from the committee? Does the agent or applicant have anything to add? <clears throat> Button on the right. Got it. Is the light on? Lights on. Go for it. Okay, my name's Dave McPherson. You're all familiar with me. Um, I'm disputing all of that. However, today I'm here to respectfully ask the committee for a referral of this application. Um, this past Thursday, I sent an email to the Secretary Tre Treasurer asking for a referral, but I was told that only the committee could grant that. So here I am, cap in hand, uh, asking for a referral. And I have two reasons for that. The first one is that my client is altering the architectural plans of the proposed dwelling. Doing so will in all likelihood alter the reliefs that are being sought. So I'm going to have to amend the application accordingly. Secondly, I'm seeking clarification from the planning department on their multiple references to Walter Street not being a street. In real life, there's 40 dwellings on Walter Street from Head Street to the far end. It's 40 of them. So to say that none of those have frontage on an improved road is beyond my imagination. It needs clarification. <laughs> it does need clarification, and I'm... Uh, working on providing all of that. Okay, planning's not given me any evidence to back up their assertion. Um, Walter Street is open. It is maintained by Norfolk County. It was maintained by the Township of Delhi, 
and it was maintained by the township of Charlottesville before that. I have that in writing from the Roads and Operations Division. I have it verbally from the Engineering Division. And according to the GIS mapping supervisor, there is only one unopened road allowance in Turkey Point, and this isn't it. I've also pulled the pin number uh, for the road, and it's owned by the public authority having jurisdiction. The public authority is only one person. That's Norfolk County. It's not Canadian Tire. So uh, the whole thing is baffling to me, and I am respectfully asking for a referral so this can be sorted out. Okay. Got it. And I'm here to answer any questions that oh, you have. Okay. Thanks very much, Dave. Uh, any comment from planning, please? Don't you just turn oh. your mic off, uh, Mohammed? Sorry. So for that, so Mr. Chair, so the concern here is whether the street is public or private. Um, I would ask uh, Lydia Harrison from Realty Services to provide some more information on that. Sure. Thanks. Thank you, Mohammed, and through the chair. Uh, what I have with me today is the original plan of subdivision for this cottage area. And this plan of subdivision was registered in and around 1929. And at the time when it was registered, Walter Street, the portion in front of the applicant's property and extending further westward, westward in front of the other lots and then slightly north and south to, I guess it's Cedar Street now, is all shown on that plan as a private road. When plans of subdivision are registered on title and streets are identified on those plans of subdivision, on the registration of the plan of subdivision on title, all of the roads will become and fall under the ownership of the municipality, except where there are words to the contrary. And in this case, private road would be words to the contrary. So in actuality, although there may be sections of the road that the county has maintained and um, that people travel over, they remain private roads. They, it will not be in the ownership of Norfolk County. It will remain in the ownership of the individual who put the plan of subdivision on title. And we have traced that back to a gentleman by the name of Francis um, Newberry Jackson, who obtained the original Crown patent from the Crown for this parcel, this subdivision area, and significantly other lands in that area as well. So as it stands right now, that is our opinion. Um, I'll have to say supported by our legal counsel as well. And so, the county in effect cannot, even though it says public authority having jurisdiction, we cannot put those roads into our ownership at this point in time. Okay. All right, so the uh, applicant is asking for a referral and uh, that will sort these types of details out down the road. Poor choice of words. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me go through the uh, formalities here. Uh, is there anyone else that wishes to speak to this application for or against presently or online? Sure, yeah, state your name please. No, stick it into the mic microphone. My name is Pauline Gibbs and I have a resident at 8 Walter Street. Okay. Which I renovated 15 years ago. I had to get uh, come to the Committee of Adjustments to get approval to do that. Mm -hmm. It was granted via the OMB, but there was never mentioned that I lived on a private street. Okay. I also know of three Walter and five Walter, which have done renovations since I've lived on this street or been 
own this property on this street. They never were told that it was a private road either. And so my question to the county is, so how could we build? And then we're refusing somebody that is doing the same thing not on a private road. At this point in time. Well, but they're, so they're just they're, to be clear. But their reason for turning it down is because it's on a private road, it's not, not a public. Turned, it's not being turned down yet. That's okay. The, you're not. No. The county is saying that we need to refuse it because of that reason. That's their recommendation. Right. It's not. Right. Okay. I'm, well, just to be clear, there's no refusal it, going no, on no, at this I, point yeah, in time. No, I understand. Okay. That. Yes. So I just want it. So there's so we'll been let, all this stuff done and okay, we've never so we'll heard let of this. Realty services respond if they, if they have a comment. Uh, yes, through the chair. Um, the only response I can um, say to that is I can't speak to what has happened in the past. We were engaged by the planning department uh, through this application um, to look at the the road, uh, whether it was an open, maintained, traveled portion. And that's what we looked at when we looked at the plan of subdivision. That's when it came to light that it was a private road as set out on the plan. Okay. Here it is. This is yep. registered on title. This is... Um, if your solicitors have done searches when you buy property, this would be a red flag for them to investigate that road. So I can only speak to what we have found today. I cannot speak to what was or wasn't found in the past. Okay. Thank you, Lydia. Linda? Uh, Linda? Yeah, I'm just actually um, just with regards to the woman that just spoke. I think she is somewhat correct, Alan, because building departments made it pretty clear they won't issue a building permit. And uh, that's stated right in the report. So Norfolk County is to some degree refusing, regardless of what we do today. And then my question, I guess, is to Lydia, like mistakes happen and I'm assuming the whoever owns the road is probably long deceased. And so there must be a way to correct all of this and somehow get the road into Norfolk County's name. Is that uh, something that's being considered? Uh, through the chair to committee members. Um, right now, like I say, the owner would be Francis Newberry Jackson and or his estate, his heirs and beneficiaries. So basically to acquire ownership of the road or any part of the road, you would have to track that back and find the estate information um, because to transfer the road would only be, be able to be done through the estate, the, the beneficiaries, the heirs would have to sign off. Um, whether the county is interested to do that or obligated to do that is is not my my call um i think it would um require review by various departments within within the county and um and probably some direction from the departments as to how they would want to proceed okay thank you i guess Anything else Lynn? Linda, yeah, go ahead. just just my um, comment, I guess, to uh, to Dave, and uh, ultimately council would make that decision, and uh, you might get further with council than with staff. And t in terms of uh, seeking ownership of the road is what I'm referring to, and given the number of cottages on that road, I think it's something that council should be uh, brought that should be brought to their attention. Okay, thank you. So we have a, in the meantime, we have a, an ask from the applicant to refer, refer, right? Not yes. defer. I learned refer. all about that tonight. <laughs> First time. That's a, it's a fine line we're walking here. <laughs> refer yes. and defer. So you're asking for a referral. Yes, Correct. for two reasons. I want yeah. to see we're changing the plan, the yeah. architectural plan, and I also want to sort out this road okay. issue, which is 
Okay. Uh, we, uh, it's not for something to sort out tonight. No, I, and I get that. Okay, so I, we got the uh, the gist of that. So let me continue. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak to this application for uh, presently? By all means, sir. No, you have to come up and. I'm sorry. Oh, all right. Okay. So you don't want to, you don't need to speak tonight. Okay. Okay. So uh, there's no one else that wishes. Is there anyone else that wishes to speak to this application presently or online? Make sure I cover everybody. <laughs> no. Okay. What are the wishes of the uh, of the committee? We have a an ask for a referral. I move to refer. Tim moves to refer. And Phil seconds. So file number AMPL 2023199 in the name of Patterson and Deborah Mothe has been moved to by Tim and seconded by Phil to be referred. All in favor, Tim and Linda. Yes. And Phil and myself, and that is carried. And we are. Yes, please. We'll be back in five. So this is a long night. Refer. Thank you. Hungry? 
Okay, let's uh, continue on and uh, press on and get this done. Next up, file number BNPL 2023184-103-3097, Ontario Inc. Care of Ken Person, and the planner can give the report. Thank you. Through the chair, reading on behalf of my colleague, an application has been received for a boundary adjustment for a section of land measuring approximately 48.76 meters in depth by 38.1 meters in width with an overall area of approximately 1,858 square meters to benefit 129 Highway 59, which seeks to expand the existing residential lot of record. Total lot size after the boundary adjustment is 3,750 square meters or 0.93 acres. The subject lands are located on the western side of Highway 59, northwest of Delhi. The subject land is zoned and designated agricultural and form part of a farm holding. The area of the subject lands, um, sorry, the benefiting lands currently share vehicle access with the giving lands. Based on the information provided to staff through the application process, there is currently no proven legal or technical need for this boundary adjustment, which will result in the loss of approximately 0 0.5 acres of agricultural land from a lot, which is already smaller than the required minimum lot size. Whilst the submitted OSSD form suggests that a new septic system could be required, it did not show that it required um, the land subject of the boundary adjustment to accommodate this improved system. It has also been stated that the land in question has been used as garden land, accessory to the dwelling for a number of years. This again is neither a legal or technical reason for such a boundary adjustment. This land remains agricultural, and whilst it has not been cultivated on the current ownership, this does not mean that it may not be cultivated in the future, and as such, it remains a loss of agricultural land. The retained lands are already deficient in terms of the current bylaws, but it is legally non-conforming. The retained lands would, however, be further deficient in terms of lot area, and as such, a minor variance is required in this instance and has been added as a condition in Attachment 1 should the application be approved. The benefiting lot was formed under previous legislation and is already a lot of record and was not a surplus farm dwelling. The boundary adjustment would increase the benefiting lands to approximately one acre, which is well above the minimum requirements, given this both in terms of the impact on agricultural lands retained and the lands benefiting. The boundary adjustment is considered to neither be appropriate nor minor and would fail to meet the overall intent and purpose of the Planning Act, Provincial Policy Statement, Official Plan or zoning bylaw, staff recommend this application be refused. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there a applicant or agent present? Okay, thank you. Uh, any questions of the planner from the committee? Plenty of you have your hand up or not? <laughs> okay. Um, does the agent or applicant have anything to add? Sure thing. Uh, my name my name's Ken Person. I am the applicant, and I'd like to thank the committee for uh, listening to my boundary adjustment tonight. Um, there's just a few points I'd like to bring home in the the one thing is that back in 1981, when we severed our lot from the farm at 0.55 acres, um, I wish we would have done one acre back then and I wouldn't have to be going through all this. 
But um, the standard lot size now typically in Norfolk County for a rural lot through farm amalgamation and surplus dwellings are around one acre. So we're only asking to get to that minimum one acre. But the main reason is, is the septic system. I know the report um, has said that uh, in, on our on our half acre lot, our, our tile beds crammed up in one corner of the lot. And after 42 years, we've lived there 42 years now, we, we do have some concerns with with replacing that someday. So we're just trying to be proactive in making this happen. And I have a quote here from Ed Dove from Bill Septic, who's the expert, and you have the, the report there, I hope, from the, the septic. And basically he said the septic system is very close to the existing lot lines. Extending these boundaries would be beneficial to the septic system and any potential upgrades in the future. So that's, you know, we're just trying, again, we're just trying to be proactive. Um, the second thing is the, the the piece of land that we're looking to add to our our property is right behind right behind it, and it's in such a small area that like I, I've been farming that I've been I grew up on the farm and I've been farming it for for 50 years, and uh, in the last 40 years we've never planted any agricultural crops in that land. It's 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 only uh, you know it's, it's 100 feet wide and like you can't even turn equipment around in it. So basically right now I'm not sure if you have the photos of it or not. But um, it, it's it's in mature trees of 30 years and grass already. So really, there'd be no physical change to the to our lot that we've been using all along. I'm just trying to get everything on the legal side and and clean things up, I guess. Um, the one other, uh, I, I guess that's all I have for now. Okay. Uh, other than one of the conditions are that every rural um, lot needs to have its own private driveway. Well, back in 1981, when we severed this lot, um, the county wouldn't allow us to get another driveway off of Highway 59, so we don't have that. So I, I'm a little confused on that one. We have been sharing the driveway with the farm up till now, um, which you can see right here. Okay. So I'm just wondering on that condition, if the committee could either grant us a, like while we're doing this anyway, if, if you see your way to, to grant us this proposal tonight, either do one of two things, maybe grant us um, a driveway for our property that's been there for all that time, or grant us legal access to that driveway of the farm maybe. So anyway, that's that's all I have for now. Okay, thanks. I'm just trying to find that. Uh, Norfolk County 2016 bylaw, each residential lots to have its own driveway recognized currently that 129 Highway 59 shares an entrance prior to approval of severance is required that a dedicated entrance to 159 be installed or 129, 59, 129 Highway 59 be installed. Yeah. So you're saying that back in 1980, what? One, 81, 42 they years wouldn't ago. grant you a correct driveway. That's correct. But now they're making it a condition. Sounds like it. At first, I, I mean, that's been 40 years, right? We've lived there all that time, and I've right. I've never addressed it or anything. No, I understand. Maybe, maybe now's the time. Okay, can I get a comment from planning, please? You're the chair. Um, so it appears that condition number four is a development engineering condition. Right. So uh, planning wouldn't have any comment on okay. the granting or removal of a condition from development engineering. Okay, thank you. Anything else from the committee? Um, yeah, just for me, I'm looking at conditions here too. And on the conditions in the report I'm looking at, number two says receipt of an undertaking uh, that the applicant owner would acknowledge that they understand a building permit would not be issued until municipal servicing capacity is awarded by the general manager. That's not applicable, I don't think, to this uh, severance application. You don't have any municipal services uh, in your location, no, correct? No, no, we don't. Okay, so. No plans for any buildings or building permits or anything. No. Okay. Nothing changes, really. Okay. Okay. Um, let me go through the formalities here. Is there anyone? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Phil, if you have a question. Um, so I guess the question with regards to the driveway is, and we're looking sort of down the future. So if you sell the farm off and keep the house, how is that going to get dealt with? And I, yeah, that's so why it'd be nice to deal with it Would now. you 
consider uh, referring this so that you could redo it and take part of the driveway to is that what we were talking uh, about before well i guess either either grant permission to put it in my own driveway or I guess would the would the farm corporation have to grant a right of way to us that i don't know <laughs> I think if they're demanding you have a driveway, they're, well, they're kind of obviously like going to sign off on driveway. what I would think. But Muhammad wants to do it. Mr. Chair, that, that would be an example of a technical reason for boundary adjustment to have a driveway, just to okay. note. Okay. Well, turn your mic on and speak into the mic. There. So that way you could uh, basically put another driveway beside this one carve that one off and keep it with the house, right? That, that would be ideal, right? Yeah. And, okay. and if that's a technical reason, then I think that would be the way to go. Okay. Um, anything else from the committee? Okay. Is there anyone that wishes to speak to this application here or online presently? Hearing none. What are the wishes of the committee? Well, I would, I'm going to make a suggestion that the applicant asks for a referral to explore the possibility of expanding the boundary to deal with the driveway issue. Okay. Are you, are you open to that? Okay. So the applicant is uh, is uh, fine with a referral. Uh, can I get a motion to that uh, uh, extent? I'll make so it Phil moves mill. Phil moves a referral. Seconder. Tim. Okay. So file number B and PL two zero two three one eight four. In the name of 1033097 Ontario Inc. Care of Ken Person, that this application be referred, moved by Phil, seconded by Tim. All in favor? Tim and Linda? Yes. Phil? Yep. Yes. And myself, and that's carried through the, in a referral. Through the chair, uh, yes. may I just seek some further clarification on the, the purpose of the referral so staff can review? To to well, clarify the conditions of the driveway and issue and possibly uh, expand his request to take in the driveway. Okay, so to clarify the condition number four as four. it pertains to the driveway and to potentially for the applicant to amend the lot configuration and purpose of the proposal? Sure. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Okay, so would that be through the planning department then I need to come back and talk about the, the driveway okay. through the chair yes that's correct so with the referral the proposal and any submissions of the proposal will change you'll work with us and we'll update the application we'll recirculate to staff including development engineering and review their comments and do the whole thing over again thanks thank you okay next up ANPL 2023-222, Margaret Long. The planner can give the report, please. Thank you. Uh, this is ANPL 2023-222. Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, so speaking on behalf of my colleague, an application has been received to extend an existing vacation home seeking relief of 3% in lot coverage to allow for total lot coverage of 18%. The subject lands are located on the eastern side of Cedar Drive within the resort residential zone of Turkey Point. They're occupied by a single story, story cottage um, with a current lot coverage of 12.1%, which would be increased to 18%. However, all other provisions in the RR zone are met in the proposed development, um, and a covered an overage, sorry, overage of three percent can be considered appropriate and minor in this instance. It's the professional opinion of staff that, that the proposed development meets the overall intent and purpose of the provincial policy statement, official plan, and zoning bylaw, and is recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you. 
Any, is there an agent or applicant present? Dave, again, okay, we'll get to you. <laughs> Anything in Turkey Point's yours, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, any questions from the committee? No, okay. Dave, you got anything to add? No? I have nothing to add. I'm just here to answer, answer any questions. questions. Okay, thank you very much. Um, what a speed it'll be. Thank you. It's a marathon tonight. Anyway, uh, is there anyone that wishes to speak for or against this application in attendance or online? Hearing none, anything further from the committee? What are the wishes of the committee? Move to approve. It moves to approve and a seconder, please. I'll second it. Thank you, Phil. So file number AMPL 2023-222, name of Margaret Long. This application has been moved by Tim, seconded by Phil for approval in accordance with section 45.1 of the Planning Act, the requested relief. Is considered minor, uh, is considered appropriate for the proposal, development, minor in nature, maintains the general intent of the Norfolk County official plan and the zoning bylaw. All those in favor, Tim? Yes. And Linda? Yes. And Phil? Yes. And myself, and that is carried. Sign it. Okay. Sealed. Okay, next up, file number 2023 Jacob Doherty. Planner can give the report, please. Thank you. Through the chair, um, speaking on behalf of my colleague, an application has been received to construct a detached accessory structure requiring a leaf of 0 0.5 meters to the maximum fernood height of 8 meters and relief of 75, 79 square meters in usable floor area from the maximum permitted usable floor area of 200 square meters um, for an accessory structure in the agricultural zone. The subject lands are um, roughly 0 0.4 hectares uh, with frontage and barley side road uh, near Cortland. Um, there's currently a single attached dwelling and accessory building on site. Um, the subject lands are designated agricultural and zoned agricultural, but it's the opinion of staff. Um, the proposed overage of 79 square meters in usable floor area and 0 0.5 meters in height um, can be considered minor. Um, there's no anticipated impact to surrounding cultivated agricultural land um, and as such are recommending approval. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Is there an agent or applicant present? Dave, thank you. Uh, any questions from the committee regarding this application to the planner? Does the applicant or agent have anything to add? Thank you, Dave. Is there anyone that wishes to speak to this application for, against, here, presently, or online? Hearing none, anything further from the committee? The committee's wishes are? I move to approve. Tim moves to approve. And a seconder. I'll second that. Thank you, Linda. File number AMPL 2023221 in the name of Jacob Doherty. This application has been moved by Tim, seconded by Linda to be approved. The proposed relief satisfies the four tests of a minor variance outlined in section 45.1 of the Planning Act. All those in favor, Tim and Linda. Yes. And Phil and myself. Let's see. Chair, and that's approved and signed. Okay, next up, ANPL 2023-223, Teresa Livingston. The planner can give the report, please. Thank you. For the chair, an application has been received to amend the wording of a previously approved application, ANPL 2022-295, from subject to the submitted design to subject to the submitted design as it pertains to the third story. Um, so these lands uh, are located southeast of the intersection of New Lakeshore Road and Cedar Street and Turkey Point. They are designated and zoned res resort residential. So for some quick context, um, application AMPL 2022-295 was approved by the Committee of Adjustment on March 15th of this year, 2023, which permitted uh, relief for a range of permissions. Um, 
and the resulting decision um, of ANPL 2022-295 specified that the permissions were subject to the submitted design to address concerns regarding the proposed height, which was caused in part by a third story. Through the approval of the minor variance application, ANPL 2022-295, um, these different items were for granted. The proposal today through 2023-243 seeks greater flexibility to meet the intent of the previous committee's decision by amending the wording of the previously approved application. Uh, the building elevation and plot plans submitted, submitted for the previous application have been included in attachment two, and a letter has been submitted by the applicant outlining the premise of the application. Um, with that said, it's evening of staff that the proposal of ANPL 2023-223 um, meets the intent of the original decision of the previous application and also meets the four tests of a minor variance and are recommending the application for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Applicant or agent. Thank you, Dave. Anything from the committee to the planner? Anything to add? Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Dave. He's all in agreement. Um, is there anyone present or online that wishes to speak to this application for or against? Anything further from the committee? The wishes of the committee are? Move to approve. Linda moves to approve. Bill will second. File number ANPL 2023-223, Teresa Livingston. Linda moves, Phil seconds to approve in accordance with section 45.1 of the Planning Act. A requested relief is considered appropriate for the proposed development. Minor in nature maintains the general intent of the official plan and the zoning bylaw. All those in favor, Tim and Linda. Yes. And Phil, yes. myself. That's approved. Okay, file number ANPL 2023245, Thomas Land. And the planner can give the report, please. Thank you. Through the chair, I'm about let's try that again. An application has been received to reconstruct a vacation home requiring relief of 50 meters and the required minimum lot frontage of 15 meters to permit a lot frontage of zero and relief from section 3.11.1, which prohibits the enlargement, alteration, or erection of any building or structure, which does not have the minimum required lot frontage on an open, constructed, and year-round improved street. This application will have the effect of facilitating development on an existing lot, which has access to Snooks Drive through a 10-foot right-of-way across 7 Snooks Drive. Um, we can describe this parcel as landlocked um, within the area of Turkey Point. It's currently occupied by an existing shed and vacation home, which was recently reconstructed and planning staff have been advised that the vacation home was initially reconstructed without a building permit. Um, the following items were submitted as supporting documents to the application and staff just want to thank the property owner and agent for working with us through this process, it's been a long and interesting one, but um, in, it's included a premise and justification letter from the agent, attachment one, affidavit from the neighbor at Seven Snooks Drive describing the site history and use on the subject lands, attachment two, building elevation drawings and plot plan, attachment three, a survey showing the historic 10 foot right of way from Seven Snooks Drive over, sorry, nine Snooks Drive over Seven Foot Snooks Drive to Snooks Drive, attachment four, land registry office parcel register for the subject lands confirming easement benefiting the subject lands prepared on September of 2022, land registry office parcel register for seven Snooks Drive confirming it is a subject to an easement um, prepared on the same date, a deed dated May 20th, 1983 for the subject lands confirming a right of way for access um, with a description of the size and location of that access, and then a deed dated April 27th, 1971 for Seven Snooks Drive, confirming it is subject to a right of way for access with the description of size and location. Um, this application will facilitate the redevelopment of a vacation home through the required municipal approvals process. So typically the establish of an easement as legal frontage has required um, a zoning by amendment, um, sometimes an official plan amendment to be decided through council to permit a new use. Um, but it's our opinion, staff's opinion that the supporting documents submitted demonstrate that this easement was historically established. Um, as a result, we understand 
uh, the following as legal non-compliant uses, the use of an easement as frontage and the reconstruction of a vacation home without the minimum required lot frontage on an open constructed and year round improved street. And a comment was included uh, in my report provided by Realty Services confirming that Snooks Drives appears to be an open travel and maintain road owned by the county. With all that said, the proposed application to permit this in the R zone, in my opinion, makes meets the four tests for a minor variance and I'm recommending it for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Agent applicant, Dave, thank you. Um, how do you get four in a row? <laughs> anyway, I know you don't. Um, anything from the committee to the planner questions? Anything to add, Dave? Yep. Okay, thank you. Just like just like tonight's meeting. Anyway, okay, thank you. Is there anyone that wishes to speak to this application for or against here or online? Hearing none, anything further from the committee? The committee's wishes are? Move to approve. Linda, thank you. Bill? File number AMPL 2023245 in the name of Thomas Land. Linda moves, Phil seconds. In accordance with Section 45.1 of the Planning Act, the registered relief is considered appropriate for the proposed development, minor in nature, maintains the general intent of the official plan and the zoning bylaw. All in favor, Tim and Linda. Yes. Bill and myself, and that is carried. I almost hit the deferred. Stamp. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, last and certainly not least, for sure, ANPL 2023187 in the name of Robert and Jane Bamford. And the planner can give the report, please. Thank you. Through the chair, um, I'm reading on behalf of my colleague. An application has been received to rebuild an existing combined boathouse and vacation home, seeking relief of um, approximately 8,170 square meters in the required lot area of one hectare to allow um, a lot area of 1,827 square meters and relief of nine meters in the required rear yard setback of nine meters to allow for a, a zero meter rear yard setback. The subject lands are located at the northeastern end of Dickinson Avenue within the resort residential zone of Long Point. The area of the subject lands is approximately 1,828 meters uh, with frontage on Dickinson Avenue and currently are occupied by a combined boathouse slash cottage resulting in lot coverage of approximately 14.8%. The existing building has been deemed a legal non-conforming structure that existed as a boathouse slash cottage combination, which was permitted, which was a permitted use of the long point zone in the previous bylaw. The replacement buildings would not exceed the 15% law coverage, but would result in a higher than existing building. However, within the current bylaws, a total height of 9.1 meters is permitted. And as such, the proposed reconstruction would conform to this. Relief is sought for both lot area and rear yard setbacks, as is typical in non-point. The existing lot areas do not conform to the current bylaw provisions. Um, so the variance is seeking relief of that point. Um, but this lot is just noting it's larger than a majority of long points. So. The relief is considered both appropriate and minor. Um, nine meters sought from the required nine meter rear yard setback is to allow um, no setback. And this really only occurs when there is this combined boathouse slash cottage arrangement, arrangement, given this is a legally non-conforming structure and is permitted in the bylaws to rebuild such buildings on the same footprint. The relief sought can be considered both appropriate and minor in this instance. In summary, it's the professional opinion of staff. The development meets the overall intent and purpose of the PPS, official plan and zoning bylaw, and is recommended for approval. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, agent or applicant present? Okay. Uh, any questions of the planner from the committee? Do you have anything to add? No? Okay, thank you. Um, 
is there anyone present or online that wishes to speak to this application for or against? Hearing none, anything further from the committee? The committee's wishes are? I move to approve. Tim moves to approve. Seconded by Phil. In ANPL 20231871, Robert and Jane Bamford, Tim moves, Phil seconds. In accordance with Section 45.1 of the Planning Act, the requested relief is considered appropriate for the proposed development. Minor in nature maintains the general intent of the official plan and the zoning bylaw. All in favor, Tim, Linda? Yes. Bill, myself, that is carried and approved. Is there any other business? Doesn't look to be. Can I get a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Tim, seconded by Bill. <laughs> no? <laughs> Linda. Yes. I'll Linda second seconds. And it is now, you're welcome, thank you, 748. Thank you.